Hello and welcome to Amaranth Thine Art. Today I'm going to be creating a card using the February 2017 Simon Says Stamp card kit. I'll do a quick run through and then we'll get started on the card. This month's card kit is centred around tea and coffee and I'll start by showing you this little die with a coffee cup. It has some cute little arms holding a heart. So this is great to paper piece um, die cuts or colour and then put pieces back together. There's also some really cute sprinkles from Doodlebug that includes these really cute um, sugar cubes and um, tea bags and also a little coffee cup that matches the die. You also get some confetti, some clips and some enamel dots. Then the pattern paper by Doodlebug is the cream and sugar pattern paper. It includes some really cute and adorable um, pieces of paper. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick flick through but there are videos out there that give you a more detailed walkthrough of what this pack includes so I wanted to keep this fairly brief so that we could concentrate on the card but it includes lots of tea and coffee, donuts, cakes, sprinkles, really bright colours so they're, they're great for fun and cute cards so whether it's for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, her birthdays, it's it's a really versatile paper pad and I've actually gone and purchased the full paper pad because it's just too cute not to use and I have a feeling I'll be purchasing more. So you can use these to cut out um, strips or blocks and um, create different things. This one's my favourite, it's got some really nice tone on tone um, patterns on there. Then we'll move on to my favourite thing in the kit and that's the stamp set by Simon Says Stamp and there are some great tea cup images, coffee cup images, tea bags and some really nice sentiments that go along with these. You also get four faces that you could use to put in the tea and coffee cups um, so it's a brilliant stamp set and I'm going to use that a lot. Then finally you get the different cards from Simon Says Stamp, so you get a baby blue, a white, a bright pink and then a craft colour. Moving on to the card, I'm placing the images into my Misty and I'm going to be stamping these with Rangers Archival Black Ink onto some watercolour cardstock. Um, with this watercolour cardstock it's got a texture to it so using the Misty means that when it doesn't stamp correctly the first time as you'll see it misses bits out. I can then just ring ink those stamps and stamp it back into the same place and then once I've got the nice crisp image that I want I can then move on to painting. I'm going to be painting with distress inks today. I'm starting with tea dye for the background of the card so I'm just smushing it onto a laminated piece of paper and then I'm going to use my pencil water brush to pick up some of that pigment and then add it to the card. I'm going to add some water to the card first before I put the ink onto the page just so that it moves around a bit more freely rather than staying in one area. A full list of the colours that I'm using today will be included on my blog and I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can find that information. I'm going for a fairly vintage Victorian colour palette today. Um, I wanted to make this um, pretty and cute but also um, kind of vintagey grungy as well without going too dark. So as you can see when I pick up that ink with my water brush and put it onto that already wet paper it helps just smooth that ink out, it doesn't leave any harsh lines, it starts to bleed into the paper and into the water which is the kind of look that I'm going for and I wanted it to look like a tea kind of colour so that was why I chose the tea dye and I think it works really well as a background and helps the image pop.
Once I've finished painting the background, I'm then adding splatters by adding some more water to the ink, picking it up on my brush and then just tapping it over the page and it adds these really nice splatters details to the background. You can keep doing this as much as you like. You can also use different brushes to get different droplet sizes as well. But for this one, I just wanted a fairly subtle splatter effect. So then I'm going to move on to colouring the rest of the image. Again, I'm using the tea dye and vintage photo for the actual tea in the teacup. And I'm going to use the vintage photo from my distress markers. I don't use my distress markers as much as I used to, so I'm making use of them in this video to colour the teacup. I'm also switching to a smaller size pencil water brush just to make sure that I get some nice details on this cup and I don't go over those lines. For the actual teacup I'm using stormy sky and tumbled glass and I'm just going to First add some of the distress marker onto the watercolour cardstock and then it will move around with that water that's in my water brush. You can also scribble it onto the laminate sheet and then pick it up from there as well. With distress markers, sometimes they are harder to blend depending on the colours if you put them straight onto the page. Some markers work better if you scribble them on a laminate or a stamp block first and then pick it up from there and then apply it to your page. You kind of have to experiment with these markers and find out what works best with you and with the paper that you've got. So once I've done my initial layer of tumble glass, because it's still wet, I'm adding the stormy sky onto the laminate and then adding it. Because otherwise I find that if you try and draw over that wet ink that's already on the page, it can tear or start to um, rip your page so that you, you get some funny texture, um, which doesn't look great in my opinion. So I prefer to put it down while it's still wet on a laminate sheet and then work on it from there. You can dry it in between layers with a heat tool. I do tend to do that. Um, I will in a minute dry it before I then add another layer. And I do layer these quite a lot because they're quite light colors. So if I want certain areas to be really dark or a lot darker than um, other bits, I will dry it with a heat tool and then keep going back in with different layers. The distress inks in the pad format or in the markers are a great way to watercolour. It's just another thing that you can do with these inks. They are so versatile. I use them for a lot of different things, but watercolouring with them is one of my favourite things to do, as well as the blending, obviously. So it's another way that you can stretch the supplies that you've already got. You don't need to go out there and buy absolutely everything. I love buying new things and trying new things, but I also like using what I've already got. So for me, these are a great way to stretch my supplies that I already have. So as you can see, I've been layering this up and drying it in between, and I'm getting some really nice texture and colour coming through now. And I really love this colour combination with the tea. Um, it really does fit with the scheme that I was going for. For the rim of the cup, and the saucer, I'm using some pumice stone. It's a really, really light grey brown, so it just adds that shadow. Um, I don't like a stark white image, so I just like to add some shadow using a bit of that grey. And I do leave it fairly light, but again, it's going for the grungy Victorian, pretty cute, but kind of vintage look. <laughs> um, so it works really well as to add some shadows and highlights onto that area. Again I'll just keep going in and doing different layers and darkening up the areas that I want um, where they're in shadow so around the back of the saucer or certain edges of the handles. Now for the heart I'm using sponge sugar and worn lipstick so I'm going to add that in there. I do add a bit of each colour first before I add the water in to create a really nice pink shade. Today I'm going to be making a five and a half by five and a half inch square card. So I will be trimming this panel down slightly um, once the paint dries and then we can then work on the edges which I'm going to scallop and the background.
So I'm using the scallop die that's in the Lawn Fawn Valentine's border set and I'm going to do this on either side to create a really nice um, edge on both sides. And then once I've die cut that through my big shot machine and then just poking out all those tiny little holes as they don't always come out properly when you die cut them because they're so tiny. So then I'm going to start assembling my card. I have a piece of the doodle bug um, paper from the pattern paper that was in the set. I'm going to add this to the card base which is five and a half by five and a half inches and then I'm just going to layer these up with different adhesives. So I'm going to stick the paper pad down with double sided sticky tape and then I'm going to use some foam tape to raise the watercoloured image off the back of that pattern paper. So I'm just going to line that up and stick it down. I think this pink ties in really nice with that little heart but it gives it a bit of pop of colour on a fairly neutral colour palette. So I'm just using some foam tape to position that and then I can stick that down and then I can add the final finishing touches to the card. To add a bit more glitz and glamour to the card, I'm using some Doodle Bugs um, White Lily Glitter Sprinkles. So I'm just going to add a few of these across the card. Now one of the things I like to do with these is just place them on top of the card before pressing them down because it means I can move them around before I've fully stuck them to the card and it's not going to pull up my paper underneath. So I kind of put them down where I think I want them, move them around slightly and then I'll press them down to make sure that they stick permanently in place. So I'm going to put a few at the top and then I'll put a couple at the bottom as well. And I really like the size of these sprinkles. You get a large, a medium and a small. So they're really good to kind of position in different sizes. I think it just adds a nice little bit of interest to the card. Then finally, I'm going to add some glossy accents to the tea in the teacup and onto the heart. And then that will finish the card for today. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, please give me a like if you did. Leave me some feedback in the comments section and subscribe to find out what I'm doing next. And also check back at the videos that I've done recently. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter where you can find out what I'm getting up to on a regular basis. Details of which are in the description box. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and I'll be back next time. Bye.